Greetings, today is Tuesday, August 5, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I'll be giving an update on the cyclonic activity we're seeing in the Atlantic. Additionally, we'll talk about which areas we'll be monitoring over the next 10 to 14 days, where multiple tropical cyclones could develop. In the infrared satellite imagery, we can identify Tropical Storm Dexter, which will continue moving over open waters of the Atlantic, while we're closely observing a strong tropical wave located in the eastern Atlantic that has a medium chance of tropical development as it moves west-northwest. We're also keeping an eye on three other areas where a low-pressure system could develop, and in some of these, we could see some type of tropical development. It's very clear that the Atlantic is becoming quite active as we begin August. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, this is due to a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation, which over the next two weeks will favor upward air motion across parts of the African continent and the Indian Ocean. This MJO phase typically creates very favorable conditions for tropical cyclone formation. Also, remember that sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic continue to be above normal, particularly in the southwestern Atlantic. So it's not surprising that this favorable MJO phase, combined with warmer than normal ocean temperatures, could result in the formation of several tropical cyclones. But before continuing, it's important to mention that at the moment, there are no direct threats, and any of these systems are far from land areas. Therefore, there's currently no reason for concern. Also, remember that forecasts beyond 5 or 7 days are not accurate, so right now we are simply watching model projections, and it's impossible to know exactly which areas could be affected by a tropical cyclone. If we look at the ensemble forecast from the European model, we can identify the areas we'll be monitoring in the coming days. First, we'll be watching for the possible development of a low-pressure system in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico which could encounter marginally favorable conditions for development and possibly impact parts of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana. We're also monitoring an area located to the east and southwest of North Carolina, where a low-pressure system could also develop and track close to or parallel to the coasts of South and North Carolina. We also see the path of Tropical Storm Dexter, which continues over open Atlantic waters, while the strong tropical wave we're monitoring from Africa could develop into a tropical depression as it moves west-northwest. And as if that weren't enough, the European model ensemble shows some members developing another tropical wave approaching the Lesser Antilles and another wave that will be coming off Africa next week. So, from this image, it's very clear we need to remain alert to cyclonic activity in the Atlantic over the coming days and weeks. In comparison, some members of the American model also show development in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico and indicate some tropical waves with cyclonic potential. According to the latest tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center at 2 a.m., they continue to give a 50% chance of development to the tropical wave south of the Cape Verde Islands and maintain a 30% chance for the area southeast of South and North Carolina. It's possible that in future updates, the Northeast Gulf of Mexico and other areas in the main development region could also be highlighted. But again, let me emphasize, at the moment, there's no direct threat to land, and it's very likely these forecasts will continue to change over the coming days. Let's briefly look at the infrared satellite imagery of Tropical Storm Dexter which is already beginning to be affected by wind shear from the west and southwest. However, it continues to generate strong thunderstorms near its circulation center, but will fortunately continue its northeastward track. If we look at the tropical Atlantic, we can see that the intertropical convergence zone remains quite active, and we'll be watching how the tropical wave near Cape Verde interacts with it, as well as keeping an eye on any low-pressure systems that develop further west. Lastly, let's review the latest projections from the global models, starting with the American model. We see Tropical Storm Dexter moving across the North Atlantic. It also shows possible development of a tropical depression associated with the wave near Cape Verde this weekend. By early to mid next week, the model suggests the first tropical wave could pass just northeast of the Caribbean and track toward the southwestern Atlantic, while not developing any of the other areas we're monitoring. In contrast, the European model projection is a bit different. It develops a possible tropical depression near North Carolina this weekend and has the next tropical wave taking a track far north of the Caribbean. By early to mid next week, it begins to show the development of a low pressure system with potential for tropical development. So here we have a clear difference between the two best global models, which gives us a good idea of the uncertainty in long range forecasts and why, for now, there is no need for concern. Looking at the German model, it also shows possible development of a tropical depression associated with the first tropical wave. It develops a tropical depression or storm east of North Carolina and, at least through the weekend, maintains the tropical wave on a path passing northeast of the Caribbean, along with a low-pressure area moving northeastward off the U.S. east coast. It also identifies the next wave we'll be monitoring for mid to late next week. Finally, looking at the AI model ensemble, 
we see it also shows the 50% chance tropical wave moving northeast of the Caribbean. Some members also develop the low in the northeast Gulf of Mexico in the area east of North Carolina heading northeast. Well, that's all for this forecast update. I'll continue updating throughout the week as the projections evolve. As a final message, I want to caution you to be careful with forecasts circulating online that claim a hurricane could pass through the eastern Caribbean. Once again, remember that forecasts beyond 5 to 7 days carry a lot of uncertainty. So, for now, in the eastern Caribbean, there is no need for concern. Just stay informed, as is typical during the peak of the season starting August 15th. Before I go, I'd like to ask you to please like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button and click the bell so you receive notifications when I post new videos. I hope you all have an excellent day. Until next time.